In last video, we sketched 2B from Mir Automata. Now I transferred her sketch to a watercolor paper. The line art has been simplified to ignore a lot of details, so I can paint in a loose watercolor style. And I'm going to keep the techniques to the basics, so if you're just starting watercolor, I hope that you can still follow along. I'm going to use two brushes. This is a pretty small round brush. And this one is a rigger brush, which gives me really fine details with the pointy end. We're going to use just two simple colors, permanent brown and ultramarine blue. Because the brown is kind of red, it turns into a darkish purple. And I'm going to use this for the left-hand side of her hair. I'm using clean water to wet the paper here roughly to the top of her head. This way, when I paint the tips of her hair, this part will give me a nice transition. So grab some of the purple, dark purplish color and painting the hair strands. So this way the color doesn't dry too quickly and you have enough time to work with the ends where you need to put in a lot of details and go a little bit slower. The painting is kind of small, so I need to use um, this rigger brush to do the ends of her hair. Now, if you're painting a little bit bigger, then that'd be okay. You can still use uh, your round brush. My round brush is quite old, so I'm losing the pointy ends. We're trying to be loose here, so don't need to be um, too strictly following the pencil outlines. But my pencil outline is kind of dark. Um, I usually try to erase a bit, but because it doesn't show very well on the video, um, I kept them kind of dark. To add some variations while the paint is wet, you can drop in some um, brown. So this is kind of wet and wet. I'm mixing a little bit more of the uh, blue and brown to darken the color. When the paint is still wet, you can do whatever you want. But once you start to see that it's drying, um, you want to stop putting in too much of the wet paint or else it will give you watermarks. But because we pre-wet this area, you have a lot of time to work on it. I left this strands to the last because it's not quite connected. So I can take my time to paint it in. Don't worry if you have some watermarks ending here and there. We're not trying to paint it like a digital painting. It doesn't have to be perfect. If you want to try lifting, you can use a clean brush and um, lift some of the paint from here. So it creates a strand kind of effect. So that's the first section. To make it simple, we're going to paint section by section. While this part is still wet, we can move on to a different section that's away from this. So you don't have to paint right beside it and get the watermark invading to the other section. So next section, we can put in the hand and the sword. Same thing, mix some of the blue and brown to get a dark color, dark purplish color. And just fill in the shape. Where she's holding the sword, 
there's going to be a shadow. So this part, you want it to be a little bit darker. So I put in the dark color and then I touched the dark color with a little bit of water to give me a soft edge. It doesn't really matter what kind of color you're using. Uh, we're just trying to get the light and shadow relationship correct. This part is facing the light, so you want it a little bit lighter. And this part will be in the shadow blocked by her body, so I'm making it a little bit darker. For this word, this part will be in shadow, putting in the dark uh, purple color. And I drag it over a bit to the edge, but I leave this part white. So it's like a highlight. And then I use a thicker paint to draw the line on the top edge of this word and I use clean water to soften the edges. This gives me a nice highlight on this word and also cover the pencil lines. So this section is done for now and we can move on to this section of her hair. Her hair is a really light color and this section is more under the light. So I'm imagining the light coming from this direction. So I'm going to use a little bit more of the brown and lighter color instead of the uh, more of the blue. So same thing, um, wet this portion. I'm trying to keep this portion white as the highlights, as the brightest part of her head. Use a little bit light brown and just touch the ends of her hair. Again, doesn't need to be too precise. Can also drop in some color around the crown of her head. And then use water to soften the edges. Put in a little bit blue at the tip and in the back. A cool tone will help to push things back. So it looks like the hair is more behind her neck. Now wet this portion of her hair and then drop a little bit of shadow here to show the overlapping here. This strand is overlapping here so it creates some shadow here.
you can draw a very light line upward here to show some shadow as well. So this is pretty much it for this section. We can add more details later. Now we can move to this portion of her dress. So we're going to paint this shape. I'm mixing up some blue and brown to get a really dark color. Her dress is kind of like a black or dark blue. So I'm going to make the color as dark as possible. And I'll start from the top paint around the edges of her hair and cover the pencil line. And what I like to do here is to bring up some of the color into her hair. So it gives it a nice and soft transition. There will be some watermarks, but don't worry about it. When the paint dries a little bit, you can see a little bit of sheen on the paper. You can use a clean brush to lift some strands. So this will be um, the hair and it looks really nice and soft. I'm dropping a little bit watermark here, doing a little bit lift to show the lighter part of the cloth. Now we can move down to this section. Same thing, paint in the really dark color. And also here. It's okay if you paint outside of the line, just use the water to soften the edges. Now we can paint her sleeve. This time I'm using a lighter color. So I mix blue and brown and added some water. So I'm going to just fill in this section. You could also pre-wet this part of paper, but I'm just using very watery paint to put in the whole section. You want to move pretty quickly so the paint doesn't dry. We're going to do some wet and wet here to create the shadows. These um, these petal looking things are separate shapes from the sleeve, so we can leave it for later. Now make some thicker paint and drop it while this area is still wet. Drop it to where the shadows and folds are.
the trick for not creating watermark is to drop in thicker paints than what you have on the paper. So they stay in the area. Instead of running into the existing paints on the paper and create watermarks. So if it looks okay, I'm gonna stop touching it because as it dries, it'll be more likely to create a watermark. Now it gives me a general shape of a sleeve. I can also lift to create some highlights here. I'm not too worried if it gives me some watermark like here, it looks pretty nice. It looks just like watercolor. I actually like the watermarks, I just don't want it to be out of control. Now the petal looking thing here is, uh, should be in shadows, so I'm just putting in darker colors. It doesn't have to be exactly filled into the shape, you can do just one stroke like this and leave some brush marks. Just adding a little bit of shadow and folds here. This part was looking too light, now it looks a little bit better. So we want to stay away from this sleeve while it's drying. Now we can paint her face mask. I'm mixing a blue and brown, a really strong color again. This time more towards the blue. Since her face is the focal point, I want the edges to be pretty sharply defined. So I'm using a very thick paint to paint around the hair. But if I mess up, it's okay as well. I can just use a white gouache or any opaque white to fix it later. And make sure I cover the pencil lines because I don't want it, that to show on her face. The tip of my brush is pretty blunt, so it's kind of hard to get these fine tips between the fine gaps between the hair. You want it to be really sharp to show the strands of the hair. Okay. Here you can use some clean water to pull the paint down. This will be the shadow on her neck. and that separates her face from her neck. Here you can use more brown to show the warmth of the skin. Now that's drying, we can paint in this section on her chest. It seems to be a lace portion on her chest, but I'm not going to paint in all those details. That's too much for a water, loose watercolor painting. So I'm mixing up some light color uh, with a lot of water, some blue, some brown with a lot of water, and I'm going to uh, hold my brush on the side and create some pattern here.
So this way my brush skips on the paper because the paper has some texture and I want to leave some white parts on this side to show the translucent fabric. And I can also create some patterns by dropping in some clean water to create some watermarks. On this side, because it's more in the shadow, I can drop in more blue. And some darker paints. At the bottom, I think this part shows her skin, so I'm going to drop in some brown to show the warmth of the skin. Of course, you can do it in the next layer. If yours is drying, just leave it for the next layer. You can always glaze on top. I'm gonna just leave it like that for now. We'll, we'll add details later. Now we can add a shadow on her face. I'm mixing a really light uh, color by mixing the two, the brown and the blue. So it's like a shadow color. So I'm going to put it in right from the middle of her face and just on this side. So this will make her face look really three-dimensional. You can bring it down to her neck as well. And soften the edges. Now I try to put it on in one shot and without touching it afterwards because I want her face to be smooth without any watermark. So I'm going to leave that and move on to another area. So her arm. Since we're going to paint a very loose painting, I'm not going to draw her hand over here. What I'm going to do is to mix a brown and blue color that's more towards the brown and I'm going to wet her arm, this whole area. I'm going to use this color with a little bit more brown to show the warmth of the skin and drop it uh, at the edge. and also where the sleeves are, because that's creating shadows. Use a clean brush to soften the middle, and the arm looks three-dimensional. Over here, just soften the edges. It'll be better if there's no pencil line here, so if you're painting yourself, you could totally remove these pencil lines and just have a very soft finish of the arm so you don't really see the hand, it just ends here. And now I'm mixing a really strong color, thick paint, and I'm going to put in her headband. and get some clean water and you can soften the edges on this side. If you're making watermark, that's fine. Don't worry about it. Now the last big portion is over here, the dress. Um, if you feel this area is too big, we can paint this portion first and ends here. I'm mixing the same thick paints in very dark color. And I'll start from the color.
while it's wet, I can make some watermarks. Ultramarine granulates, so it can create uh, really nice water marks if you want to. Darkening this part a bit. It's too much blue, so I'm adding a bit brown and just painting over it. Since this is the last portion, let's just keep painting and finishing it and then we can add details. Now the upper body is where I want to be more detailed in this painting. So for the dress, I can be really loose and then just draw with my brush. It's okay if you leave those dry brush marks. That just gives it motion. And it's okay if you have color variations as well. It just makes it more interesting. This part has some folds and it's in the shadow, so I'm putting in some darker color here. And there could be a fabric fold here. but your brush stroke can go this direction to give it some motion. All right, now it's time to add some final details. Going to switch to the rigger brush. I want to strengthen this line a little bit. Also the strand over here. There's also a shadow separating this front piece. There's also this part that needs some more separation. So I'm wetting I'm wetting the part where I want a darker color and I'm dropping in darker color with the rigger brush. Now I'm darkening the area between her hair strands. This little bit of dark paint makes a big difference. I'm also darkening here so that her strands pops more.
that's about it for the hair. We can just leave it like that. Her nose is kind of here. I don't want to put too much details, but a tiny little bit of shadow would be enough. I'm using more of the brown color and her mouth is slightly open. I'm just going to fill in her mouth. And also give it a little bit of sh more shadow under her mouth. Soften it with a brush. For her chest part, uh, there's a part that's see-through, which follow a line like this. Uh, I'm just putting in a brown color with a rigger brush and soften it with clean water. Right. So that's enough details. And I think this arm is a little bit pale, so I'm going to add some brown color at the edge and then I'll soften it with a clean brush. For her sword, I think this part can be a little bit darker. And because it's 2B, we can't forget about her mo. Once again, mixing up a really dark color and drop it here. Now, one last tip is if you missed any of these hair strands and you want to touch it up, you can use a poster color or any opaque white, like white gouache or white ink, and just put a thin line in here. This will really give you the delicate look of the hair strands. And if you want some here, you can also put it in. So there might be hair flying this direction. You can use it to cover up your pencil lines. Uh, maybe have this one pop more, have something here, but don't overdo it. If you do it too much, then it kills the loose feeling of this painting. You can also add highlights or touch up the shadow on her lips if you missed anything. So this is the finished painting of 2B in a loose watercolor style. I hope you find this real-time tutorial helpful and I'll see you in my next video where we can paint more characters together.